what I try to accomplish in the book is to present some um, axiomatic foundation of ethics in the same way as Mises presents an axiomatic uh, foundation of economics. Uh, most of you are familiar with Mises' work um, where he begins his economics with the so-called axiom uh, or um, axiom of uh, action um, and uh, this axiom of action uh, is axiomatic because you cannot uh, not act. Whenever you try to refute uh, that humans act, uh, you have to engage yourself in an uh, activity and so we have, so to speak, a firmly established starting point from which all of economic theory is derived. And uh, what I do in the book is uh, to show we have in ethics, we have a very similar axiomatic starting point, which is called uh, the axiom of uh, argumentation, or also the a priori of argumentation. Um, we cannot uh, deny that we can argue, um, engage in a discussion with each other, because if we would deny this, then we would already be engaged precisely in, uh, in argumentation. So we have a firmly established starting point, a starting point that cannot possibly be denied as being a starting point be beyond which you cannot possibly uh, go. And um, once we have the starting point of we have to argue with each other, uh, it follows that uh, no statement, no proposition that denies this uh, starting point can possibly be defended. Or we can also say that whatever must be taken for granted insofar as we engage in discussions with, with each other cannot again be disputed uh, in terms of its validity because uh, if we would dispute it, then we are engaged in what is called a performative contradiction. Uh, the content of our statement would be contradicted by the very fact of making this, uh, uh, making this statement. And the second thing I do is to de delineate what the task of ethics uh, is. The task of ethics is uh, conflict avoidance or peaceful uh, cooperation. And we are uh, confronted with the possibility of conflicts because there exists uh, scarcity. And in order to solve the problem of how can we avoid conflicts uh, uh, given the fact of uh, scarcity, we obvious, it is obviously required that we must have exclusivity rules or rules of property that assign the right to control scarce resources to one person rather than uh, uh, to another. So scarcity is one of the requirements or one of the um, one of the requirements of having ethical problems and the other requirement for having ethical problems is the fact that we must have rational entities being involved in, uh, in conflicts, uh, entities that can argue and discuss uh, with each other. A further requirement for any type of ethics is it must be a discipline that formulates rules which are universalizable. That is to say, all people, all arguers must be capable in principle of agreeing to these rules. And further requirement for any type of ethics is we must formulate rules that allow us to act from the very beginning of mankind on. That is, we must be able to start right away. And the solution to this uh, problem is well known in these circles. That is, uh, we must have self-ownership. We must be owners, exclusive owners of our own physical bodies in order to be able to engage in argumentation. Uh, if I don't own myself and I would not recognize the self-ownership of my uh, uh, opponents in an argument, then obviously we could not possibly engage in uh, I say this, you say something else, and so forth, and uh, arguing back and, uh, back and forth. So self-ownership cannot possibly be, be, be denied as uh, a, valid, uh, a valid principle uh, without falling into a contradiction. And uh, the, second, uh, the second rule is we must have uh, the right to appropriate previously unowned uh, resources. Uh, if we would not have the right to 
uh, appropriate uh, acquires the right of exclusive control of previously unowned resources, then we would all die out. And uh, if we would all die out, then obviously no ethical problem would exist uh, whatsoever. So two principles are entirely sufficient in order to uh, come up with a theory of property rights that cannot possibly be disputed by anyone, uh, the right to own ourselves, uh, our own body, and the right to acquire previously unowned uh, resources and um, uh, acquire thereby exclusive control over these uh, resources. And these two principles are by no means just uh, conventions. Um, conventions are uh, rules for which we have alternatives, so to speak. Um, a convention is, for instance, uh, that we use the Latin alphabet when we um, engage in, uh, in written communication with uh, people. And we have an alternative to these conventions. We can also use the Cyrillic alphabet, for instance. But uh, uh, the rules that I mentioned, uh, self-ownership and uh, uh, ownership in um, originally appropriated uh, resources, there is no alternative to them if uh, we understand that the purpose of ethical rules is to uh, avoid any type of, of conflict and to allow people to act from the very beginning of mankind on. No other rules can possibly uh, achieve this uh, result of conflict-free uh, in, uh, conflict interaction except these two, uh, except these two rules.